Hello Dave, this is AdFree. Thanks to all you guys supporting the channel on Patreon. All income from donations and Patreon are used directly to upgrade cameras, light, microphones, software, things that allow me to produce more and better looking videos for you guys. All Patreons also get a discount at the merch store and you have the option to get your name listed at the end of every video. So become a Patreon by following the link in the video description. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Hello Dave with Outworth Astronomy. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. It's Monday, and that of course means it's time to have a look at what's been going on in Elite and on the channel. And of course, it's not been a quiet week in Elite. We have the beta for the first beta of the fleet carriers just concluding today. And last week, Frontier did address some of the concerns that were posted by the community, especially regarding adding universal cartographies to the carrier. So they will now be coming in beta 2 as an additional service, just like all the other services, as well as large reductions to the upkeep that has been sliced 80 to 90 percent so that it seems like a fully fitted carrier with all the bells and whistles that includes black market and redemption office, everything will have an upkeep at around 25 million. Um, the base upkeep cost has been reduced from 10 to 5, and then that gives a little bit more room to add upkeep to uh, to the various services. The spool up and cooldown time between jumps has been reduced down to 15 minute spool up, 5 minute cooldown. Fuel has now been at least twice as effective. But of course, there's still plenty of stuff to discuss regarding fleet carriers. I was part of a roundtable talk hosted by the Luzku Radio yesterday, so on Sunday, where we discussed a lot of it. But I just want to address some of it here. One of the main concerns that I still see people posting is still the um, the whole decommissioning system. And, and there are things it's important to remember that the decommissioning system and the upkeep goes hand in hand. You, you, as I see it, you can't have one without the other. If there's no decommissioning system, why would you ever pay your upkeep? And similarly, how would you determine when to decommission something if there wasn't a upkeep system? So those two things are kind of, kind of related. Um, and one of the problems, one of the main concerns that I see people have at the moment is the fact that they're still not really happy with the fact that if you go AFK for an extended period of time, your fleet carrier will be taken away from you. It's not like if you're going to go away for 10 weeks, your fleet carrier is gone. You can add money to the fleet carrier and pre-allocate them to upkeep so you can keep the thing flying for, well, years without ever logging on if you just allocate enough money. It will mean you will lose quite an decent amount of money but but you can so it's not like be gone for 10 weeks your fleet carrier is gone i do agree that the commissioning system could be better but i'm i don't feel as strong about it as some other people do because i if you just with a minimum amount of planning you can get around the problem relatively easy without losing too many credits i mean it was stated in the commander's handbook that you were able to spy and sell the services on the fleet carrier for the same price so just like modules in the station you can buy them, sell them again. If you know you're going to go AFK for a long period of time, jump the fleet carrier into a administration service system, sell all your services, and you're down to a 5 million upkeep a week. That's just 260 mil a year. I mean, if you have 5 million, 5 billion, sorry, to, to throw out on a fleet carrier and all the additional services, and remember, you just sold all the services for a significant amount of money you should have enough money to keep that thing flying with the just the base upkeep for quite a bit of time. I agree it's not the ideal solution. There are best, definitely other solutions that I would like to see. But the reason why I'm not too concerned about it is because just with the upkeep, it's a relatively small change that you need to do. The upkeep was just change some numbers. Now, a lot of people have been discussing the fact that, oh, couldn't they just mothball it, basically just put it out of, of service? Well, they are actually 90% of the way to already doing that. Because it's not like when a fleet carrier becomes decommissioned that it just gets deleted off the server and never to be seen again. It's still technically there because if other players have ships, modules stored in the fleet carrier, they can still ship transferred out of the fleet carrier. So it's not like everything on the fleet carrier just outright disappears. They are like 90% there. The only change they need to do is when they decommission it, instead of not allowing people to re reactivate it, they just need to allow people to reactivate it. Then all the other mechanics of it going, like getting re removed from the game so people can't use it, people can still get their assets out, it's already there. 
it's already working, it's on the beta server, no problems. They just need to make that tiny, tiny change of allowing the owner to reactivate it and then they're good to go. It's a minor change and I think just as with the upkeep, it's gonna take longer in meetings to decide if they wanna do it than it is for the developer to actually do it. So I think it's a small change and I'm pretty sure, or at least I hope, that just as with the upkeep, that Frontier is going to listen to the feedback and they're going to make a change to it. So that's not what I'm too worried about. The things that worries me the most with fleet carriers is the things that requires large changes, that requires new mechanics that doesn't exist yet. Don't get me wrong, I think that where the fleet carriers are now, we are like 95, 99% of the way there. And if they launched in this state they were now, I wouldn't complain. I think that would be okay. They definitely have a long list of things I would like to see change, but a lot of it is minor things like UI changes here and there, some additional services, splitting shipyards into a ship storage and a ship cell service, some stuff like that. It's it's minor things, but the main thing that I'm still concerned about is still the fact that I would love to see a little bit more love for explorers. We already got a lot of love for explorers in the, in the last announcement with better better fuel efficiency so you can jump further, reduced upkeep cost, added UC. So there's already been a lot of stuff done for explorers. But the main problem I see is still the fact that you are forcing explorers out mining, which I think is a bit unfortunate since some explorers might not enjoy that gameplay loop of going out and mining. They would maybe rather go and spend their time exploring. So I would love to see some kind of options for explorers or for the fleet carriers to automatically, maybe as an additional service, automatically refuel its fuel tank. It could be if you were parked at a planet with an icy ring or something like that, then it could automatically refuel, I don't know, some mechanic around that that would just allow players to automatically refuel. It shouldn't be something that you could make a huge number of profit on. I mean, the fuel would just go straight into the tritium deposit and you as it is right now, you can't take fuel out of the tritium deposit only into, so you couldn't use it as a passive income because you can't actually get it into your cargo and sell it. That's fine because it shouldn't be a passive income. It shouldn't be something you just sit and let that trickle in money slowly. So I think some a mechanic with a passive fuel re, uh, refueling would really make it a lot more um, suitable for exploration as well. And I'm more worried about stuff like that because that's a mechanic we don't have. It's not a terribly difficult mechanic, I think, to make. I mean, if this service is enabled and if in orbit around a planet that has an ice ring, then add X number of fuel every hour. It's not the most difficult thing to make, I think. Overall, I am still very positive about the fleet carriers. I think what Frontier has done so far is absolutely great. I am very much looking forward to seeing this um, going live in June. I'm also looking forward to the beta next month where we're going to get all the Xbox commanders and PlayStation commanders on as well. We can begin to try and see how this whole cross-platform works, beginning to trade items cross-platform, and it's going to be a massive, massive change to Elite. Overall, I'm very positive about the fleet carriers. I think what Frontier is doing is great, and it's nice to see that they listened to the feedback they got. They made some huge changes that pulled them leaps in the right direction. And if they continue down this path, I think Fleet Carers is going to be something absolutely amazing, absolutely great. On the channel side, something quite amazing happened on Friday. The channel surpassed 50,000 subscribers. And I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys, regardless of whether you subscribed yesterday or if you subscribed, well, years ago when I first created the channel. I really appreciate it. And I've been looking forward to this milestone for quite a while. I have started the planning. And there will be an announcement video out as soon as I have some final dates for when the different things are going to happen. But what I can reveal right now is it is going to be something with a two-week um, event that's going to run where I will be posting some special behind-the-scenes videos. I've decided on going with a behind-the-scenes theme for the whole 50,000 celebration. That means I'll be doing stuff like studio tours and show how the whole workflow works in my video. There will be some giveaways or some pretty awesome things. I can already spoil some of it and uh, there are going to be at least a uh, an x52 pro hotus up for grabs there's probably also going to be a lot of other cool stuff i need to get the final confirmation of all of that before i, I announce that but there's going to be some awesome prizes up for grabs so i would definitely recommend you stay tuned to the channel and when the announcement video comes out follow the events that week there are also already been posted um, special uh, limited time merchandise on the channel's merch store. You can find the link in the description. Mine haven't uh, arrived yet. I just added it yesterday to the store and just ordered my own samples of it. But I'll be sure to show you as soon as it arrives. 
but you can go over, you can have a look. It's going to be there for, well, from now on until the event concludes. So you have the option to get it for a couple of weeks. So go over, check it out. I really enjoy the new design that has been made specifically for this event. So please go check it out. Also, the Commander's Toolbox, the site I've been working on for now, well, half year now, I think. I think I started back in November. I finally think it's at a state now where it's ready to be released, at least in its, in its first version. It doesn't mean developing on the site is going to end. Um, quite the opposite. I'm definitely going to continue adding more tools. I did change the direction of the site a bit midway, which is also one of the reasons why it did take a little bit longer to get it um, up and running. At the beginning, it was more of a, of a guide thing where I just wanted to write a lot of guides. But after the more I've worked with it, I realized I much more enjoyed the writing small tools like the multi-stop planner and and, uh, and all that other stuff you can go and I'll link in the description as well you can go check it out there'll be a proper announcement video of it coming out um later this week where i'm also going to show you all different tools what they do how you use them and again this is something i'll keep continuing to developing and i would love your guys feedback and if there are tools you would like to see then do let me know then I just quickly want to talk about the live stream tomorrow. Um, I had originally planned that I wanted to go out and maybe do a little bit of mining, but I've been mining so much over the weekend that I need to see something else than, uh, than the hotspots in Boran. So um, I think I'll take out my uh, my colonial and we'll go out and we'll do some exploration. We'll look at some stars. We'll see if we can find some interesting things. It's always nice and relaxed when we have these deep space um, live streams. So I hope you will join me tomorrow. It's going to be the same time as usual, 7 o'clock in-game time. And it will be streamed for us on YouTube and on Twitch. And as always with these exploration streams, I have no idea what we're going to come across. I have a destination that I'm currently flying towards. I don't really know exactly what, uh, what we're going to find along the way. So we're just going to have a nice and, uh, and casual fly, not hurry too much take the time, smell the roses kind of trip. That's going to be it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a like, subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.